Welcome to the Find My New Life podcast. I'm Christopher Lapine, spiritual liberation author and speaker. This podcast brings you inspiration, hope, and answers for how to live a modern, God-centered spiritual life. It will help you have a more direct, deeper experience of God, find more happiness, and live your incredible God-given destiny. You can find all my podcasts, as well as videos, books, and more at findmynewlife.com. So, let's get started with today's show. Hello, this is Chris. Welcome to the Find My New Life podcast for spiritual truth seekers. This is the podcast for March the 5th, 2023, my 10th podcast of the year. The Five Steps to Divine Forgiveness, The True Attitude of God. Today's podcast is going to help you experience the forgiveness from God, find new life and hope, find energy and joy and motivation to grow. You'll understand the five key steps to experiencing divine forgiveness. And as a bonus, I'm going to tell you about an amazing new source of information about God. So let's get right to it. Um, You may be feeling like there's something that you're not proud of. You may be feeling as though you've made a mistake or hurt someone, or maybe you didn't do something that you should have done. And really, that's what seeking forgiveness is all about, isn't it? We're um, just unhappy with what we've done, our past, and we don't want to repeat the same mistakes, and we want to be welcomed back. And really, we are feeling a desire for God, for wholeness, for being part of that relationship. We want to be accepted back into the relationship. We want forgiveness. Um, We want new life and self-improvement. And I can tell you, I don't know about you, but I have those kinds of feelings every day in certain ways about things I want to improve that I haven't, uh, I haven't improved. Uh, things that I may have been dealing with for years, maybe you've dealt with them uh, as well. Uh, today, I'm going to ask you to um, open your mind completely uh, to what I have to say and just see if your inner spirit is telling you if it's true or not. Um, think about the experience that you've had. If you keep Um, having the same kinds of thoughts and opinions that you've always have had. And if you keep um, doing the same things you've always done, then there's little chance uh, for progress. So I'm asking you to just uh, open your mind today, suspend your judgment, listen to that inner spirit. And when you start to feel hope within you, Accept it, believe it, let it start to grow, because that's what God is going to give you. It's not too good to be true. Of course, you have to make your own decisions. So um, let's get started on this journey of the five steps to divine forgiveness. And of course, please stay with me through the entire podcast. Don't forget, in the end, I'm going to give you a new source of really amazing information about God. Okay, step one. Step one is to prepare for forgiveness. This is a very important step. You want to get off on the right footing. You want to make sure and you want to think about your sincere longing for growth, for truth. Do you really uh, feel bad about what you've done or haven't done? Do you have a desire to change, to get better, to feel better, to make things right? Are you coming with an open heart and mind? These are all important. You want to reflect on why you want to be forgiven. If the motivation is growth, that's the best motivation, of course. Um, And also realize that there are some things that you think you're responsible for, but you're really not responsible for. And let me explain that. You have to realize what you have control of in your life and what you don't have control of in your life. And you need to get rid of those bad assumptions to move forward. And um, you need to decide to give all you can to open your mind to new assumptions. And let me give you an example. There are many people, you may, have, you may know some people like this, you may have been through this, but some people actually think they're responsible for the abuse that they've taken. 
especially as a child, if they were a child and there was abuse. Um, and, and this can go back uh, many years. I actually had someone make a comment on my channel about that. Um, this person had experienced horrific abuse and thought that they were responsible. Um, if you believe that you're responsible for some type of abuse or wrong toward you, you're absolutely wrong. Please understand that. Um, when you believe something like that, that's actually a, a way to at least feel some control on the situation. In a situation where you had no control, again, if you think that you are responsible for someone abusing or attacking you, you are not in any way. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Um, now, if you're in a situation right now where you're being abused, where you're under great stress and psychological pain from someone, um, you do have influence. You can move forward and move away from that to a healthy relationship and situation. And I encourage you to, um, you know, work with your friends, work with resources and uh, find a way out, find a, a better way, a safe, a safe place if you need to. Okay, so um, just go forward prepared for, uh, to receive forgiveness on the things that you have some control over. So that's step one, prepare for forgiveness. Step number two is to spend time with God and apologize. It's not enough to just be, you know, going through your day real quickly and say, hey, I'm sorry, and cruise on. Because in a way, you're talking to your own self-consciousness, your own, you're, you're talking to your own mind at that point. You really have to spend some quality time with God and let him in. Let the spirit within you be that direct phone line to the creator of the universe. The spirit within is going to allow you to do that. And whenever you feel an urge to talk to God, just try to find a place to sit quietly, listen briefly, and just express your heart. You want to pour your heart out and then listen. Pour your heart out. And then listen, apologize, say you're sorry, go into it, express all of your feelings. If you have feelings of guilt, express it, whatever it is, go on and on until you are completely poured out. And then you want to, of course, listen to what God has to say to you. Listen. And you want to spend some time each day, if you can schedule a little bit each day, maybe it's in the morning when you get up, uh, whatever it is, it could be at any time of day. And it doesn't matter if you start out with 30 seconds, and I'm not kidding, if you start out with just 30 seconds and you do it over and over again every day, it's going to grow and it'll be longer and longer and you'll have more significant experiences with God. Uh, just persist, do it every day. Okay, so we've done step number one, prepare for forgiveness. Step number two, spend time with God and apologize. Step number three, accept God's attitude toward you. Um, God is more amazing, more stupendous, loving, and kind than any type of um, God we could think of. Now, if you've got different kinds of conceptions about God and God's ability to forgive you, God's attitude toward you, that's going to block the experience of God. It's like, uh, you know, it's like trying to look through a window that has a lot of dirt on it or uh, dark curtains. You have to kind of draw back your misconceptions and preconceptions and let God clean that window. Relax, let God in, trust, trust what God's going to tell you. God is the creator of the entire universe. God loves you dearly as his child. Your loving divine father has total unconditional love for you. Whatever you've been through in your life, accept that. Believe that. The creator has an amazing life for you, an amazing destiny for eternity. And that eternity starts right now in this life and can go on and on and on and on. He will provide for you. He knows everything you need now and for out all eternity, and he has arranged it all. You're going to get everything you need, when you need it, where you need it, in the way you need it, for as long as you need it. When you're ready to make the decision to receive it and move forward. And the implications are, I think, for all of us, 
is that he's got us. We just need to trust as little children and go forward and accept that almost unbelievable love from God. Now, that doesn't mean that he just, <laughs> he just says, oh, everything, you know, it's fine if he did that and, and condones it. And, you know, I love you. It's fine. Uh, he expects us to grow. He expects us to try and change. Um, and as long as we're trying, um, then, you know, we're making progress. No, but make no mistake, whatever you are doing, whatever you have done, even if you're going back, even if you're angry at God, even if you're going against God, even if you're ignoring God, his presence never goes away. He's there 24-7, every hour, every minute, every second, trying to get through. Even while you're sleeping, he is trying to work with your soul. So just remember that accept God's attitude toward you, and that will be the doorway to a totally new life. Number four, seek God's guidance. So you're listening. You want to keep listening repeatedly. You're feeling that love. When you feel that love from God, that's the guide. That's the indicator that you're getting communication from God. When you feel that profound love, that punch of love, that embrace of love, that immersion of love, you know you're making contact with God. So um, you'll get to a, a level of certainty about that, and God's going to start to provide you guidance and inspiration and confirmation. So uh, wait to do that. And you can ask for questions. Uh, you, you can ask questions for God to answer all kinds of things, and he will give you guidance. He'll give you guidance on specific ways he wants to, you to live your life. He'll give you guidance on just a general approach to life, specific things he wants you to do. So listen to that and he'll, he'll go forward with you. So we've done step one, prepare for forgiveness. Step two, spend time with God and apologize. Step three, accept God's attitude toward you. Step four, seek God's guidance. So now we're on to step five, follow God's guidance and forgive others. And really, it's about making a change in your priorities in life, changing the habits of your life, treating people differently, asking for God's guidance again and again. The only things worth striving for really are the eternal, infinite, true, beautiful, and good things, the relationship to things. So you want to have a foundation, that incredible foundation of peace, assurance, security, motivation, confidence, power, joy, that comes from the experience of God, the love of God, and that enables you to go to the next level to get beyond any guilt feelings you're feeling and to move forward into progress. Really, following God's guidance unlocks um, the full experience of life. And your attitude toward others unlocks the feeling the experience of God's forgiveness. In fact, it is not until we forgive others that we experience the full love, the actual forgiveness of God. I'll say it again. It is not until we forgive others that we experience the full forgiveness of God. It is like we are vessels that are being filled with God's love, but it's only the flow of love through us that enables us to experience it. So we've got to open the door on the other side and let the love flow through us to others. If we don't, we're just not going to feel the depth of God's love, of his forgiveness. I've got a couple quotes I want to read to you from the Arantia book, which is this new source of truth I was telling you about. The Father in heaven has forgiven you even before you have thought to ask him, but such forgiveness is not available in your personal religious experience until such a time as you forgive your fellow men. God's forgiveness, in fact, is not conditioned upon your forgiving your fellows, but in experience it is exactly so conditioned. Jesus from the Arantia book. So again, we're not going to experience the forgiveness of God from God until we forgive 
our sisters and brothers. Fact. Here's another quotation from the Urantia book, from Jesus again. How can you come to God asking consideration for your shortcomings when you are wont to chastise your brethren for being guilty of these same human frailties? I say to all of you, freely you have received the good things of the kingdom, therefore freely give to your fellows on earth. So it's, again, it's the giving, it's letting that love flow through you that's going to get you to the next level. It's really about viewing others as God views them. It's about understanding others. That's how we enable ourselves to love others. So in the end, the full experience of um, forgiveness from God is dependent on us showing forgiveness and love to others. And the only way to do that is to spend time with God, have that strong energy. You're going through all of these steps, right? You're preparing for forgiveness. Number one, you spend time with God and apologize. Number two. Number three, accept God's attitude toward you. Number four, seek God's guidance. Number five, follow God's guidance and forgive others. So all of that prepares you. You want to understand them and see them as God sees them, as little children trying to grow, trying to understand, trying to be positive. Some of them may still be abusing you. Some of them may still be causing problems. Most of it is not intentional. There are truly very evil, brutal, horrible people in the world who love to do this. We know this. But most of the people don't. Most of the people are good. God wants us to love those people and forgive them. So when we think about forgiveness, what is the real nature of forgiveness, of God forgiving us? And this is a critical point, so please stay with me in this podcast. This, it, we're not over. Um, the real nature of forgiveness is really love, is being willing to love. Now think of it this way. Let's say a friend borrowed your car and uh, wrecked it was reckless. Um, anyway, you, would, you were really upset about this. Um, now you have to get out, get a new car, go through the insurance process, all of this. And what happens is um, kind of the, and you've been through this, I'm sure, the, the love we have for that friend is in a way replaced or suspended with the anger. And we don't have unconditional love toward that friend because um, we're so angry. So the gate that opens is called forgiveness. When I forgive you, the love flows through. So when we go back to the whole process of experiencing God's forgiveness, when we raise the gate and let God's love flow through us, when we imitate God, then we experience the forgiveness. Forgiveness is the raising of the gate. The interesting thing that Jesus just said, the master, is that God has forgiven you even before you've even thought of asking him for forgiveness. So, but then, is there any limit to God's forgiveness? Not at all. In fact, God loves you under all conditions, no matter what. His love is unconditional. He's beyond anything we can possibly imagine. So there never was a time when God lowered the gate on letting his love flow. His love flows all the time when you're doing wrong, when you're doing right, when you're confused, when you're angry at him, when you ignore him. Doesn't matter. When you're going backwards, doesn't matter. His love is there, period. So God never withholds his love. So there's no need for him to raise the gate on his love to forgive you because He always loves you. Now think about that. It's always there. God never withholds his love. He doesn't condone evil. He doesn't approve of evil things, but um, he never withholds it. And I think the greatest example of this is a parable that Jesus told. It's in the Bible. It's in the Arantia book, but it's the parable of the prodigal son. And if you haven't heard it, here's here's a quick story. So um, there's a, a wealthy landowner. He has a couple of sons, one older, one younger. And the younger one 
gets bored of farming life and says, look, dad, give me half of my inheritance <clears throat> and then I can go on and find my way in life. And the father says, well, I'd rather that you stay. And, and uh, he says, no, I want it. So he takes half of his inheritance. He leaves, goes to a dist- different country and he indulges himself. He buys things, nice clothes. He parties, he drinks, he eats, he's with prostitutes just all the time, completely immersing immersing himself in this kind of amusement park of fun. And he goes on and on until he runs out of all the money, half of his inheritance. And now he's with hog farmers, working for hog farmers, and he's starving to death. And he thinks, I am out of my mind to be here. Um, I was an idiot. I'm going back. He goes back to his father. Meanwhile, every day his father has been watching for him on the road, watching for his return, yearning for his return because he loves his son so much. His son shows up on the road and falls down at his father's feet and says, forgive me. Um, I've sinned against you and against heaven. And his father says, you know, stand up. Um, I love you. I'm so thrilled that you're back. And he says to the servants, we're going to have a party. Bring out the robe for him. Bring me the son's ring. And he accepts him completely. And that is an example of the profound love of our father, of our loving father. Now, in that story, the father did not approve of the things the son had done, but he was thrilled that all of that life experience brought him back to reality. And life can do that to us if we allow it. All the challenges in life can bring this back to the reality. So now think about it. Think about the things you're ashamed of. Think about your mistakes. Think about your problems and realize that God loves you no matter what. What does that mean for us? Um, When we fully embrace God, we can be healed from anything, anything we've done or that has been done to us. We can move forward um, and actually forgive ourselves and forgive others. We can have total security in the uncertainty and variations in life. We are held at all times in the arms of our loving, loving, divine, universal Father, the creator of the universe. His divine promise is to be with us always. Remember to believe the inner doorway to all is your spirit within from God. God gave you this spirit. Believe it feel it, spend time with it, accept it. And that spirit will teach you that you are truly a child of God, of the father of the entire universe, and that you have an incredible destiny. He will meet all your needs. He loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. We are all sisters and brothers. And when you accept it, when you motivate your life with this faith, when you let this belief begin to change your life, when you try, it opens the doors to more experience of God and an incredible reality. Believe and the doorway is opened. You have incredible value and potential. You have an amazing destiny. And just believe. Go forward, apologize to God, spend time with God. Use those five steps. Prepare for forgiveness. Spend time with God and apologize. Accept God's attitude toward you. Seek God's guidance. Follow God's guidance and forgive others. My friends, thanks for joining me today. As always, I appreciate your support, your interest. If you like this podcast and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe, follow me, or share it on social media. And uh, I have a website, of course, findmynewlife.com, YouTube site, and other sites. And if you know of anyone who could benefit by this podcast, uh, please, please share it with them. And I have many others that you can find on my sites. Everybody, I wish you the best. We'll see you next time. Thanks for listening today. I hope it helped you on your journey. Go to findmynewlife.com for all my podcasts and much more. If you'd like to contact me with ideas or requests, use the contact me link on that website. I wish you the best on your spiritual journey. Remember, you are a child of God and we are family. You could claim an amazing destiny. See you next time.